that chocolate is a booming business. It's worth more than $90 billion annually. In the US alone, each person consumes on average around 9 kilograms, nearly 20 pounds of the stuff each year. My chocolate! My beautiful chocolate! But how much of an impact does our love of this sweet delicacy have in the environment? The suspense is terrible! I hope it'll last. <laughs> People have been consuming chocolate since at least 450 BCE, when it was usually fermented into a Mesoamerican drink. Fast forward to the 16th century and chocolate arrives in Europe, where people started adding sugar. Today, the varieties of chocolate are mind-boggling, pulling together ingredients from across the globe. But making this sweet treat often relies on three key ingredients. Cacao, which is used to produce cocoa, soy, and palm oil all of which are among the main drivers of tropical deforestation. Tracing the trail of these three ingredients is difficult. In what's known as the direct supply chain, companies can draw a clear line from farmers to their product line, though even this can sometimes be challenging. However, large volumes of these ingredients are sourced indirectly through a web of intermediaries and traders, where the route back to the farmer is far more opaque. That lack of transparency and traceability makes the risk of hidden deforestation higher. This is the case for cocoa, without which there would be no chocolate. Originating in Latin America, it's now farmed around the world in tropical regions, including in West Africa, where an estimated 70% of the world's supply is grown. Feeding the world's sweet tooth has come at a high environmental cost to countries such as Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana. The loss of vast swathes of forest, stretching back decades in both countries, is tied in part to the expansion of cocoa plantations. In Côte d'Ivoire, less than 10% of the country's forest cover remains. The vast majority of West African cocoa is sourced indirectly, meaning it is grown by numerous smallholder farms. A complex weave of factors, including poverty, low prices, low yields and poor traceability, drives these farmers to clear more forest to sustain their livelihoods. A push to produce more cocoa also leads to a heavy reliance on pesticides and other chemicals, resulting in pollution and threats to wildlife. In Côte d'Ivoire, the world's largest producer of cocoa, plantation expansion has directly impacted protected areas reducing habitat for endangered species such as the country's dwindling forest elephant populations. Cocoa from conserved areas often makes its way into global supply chains untraced. As much as 20% of the country's cocoa may come from protected areas. Looking ahead, experts warn that climate change may cause crop declines in Côte d'Ivoire and Ghana, leading to rapid plantation expansion into still forested areas of the Congo Basin including the Democratic Republic of Congo and Cameroon, turning these nations into new deforestation hotspots for cocoa. A lesser ingredient in chocolate is soy lecithin, a leftover byproduct from the processing of soybeans. This is used as a cheaply available emulsifier during the production of many chocolate products. Milk chocolate too can be tied to soy, as dairy products often rely on the crop to feed cattle. As a result, soy production is closely linked to the expansion of cattle ranching, the main driver of deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon. The demand for chocolate's ingredients here may be indirect, but can be tied to forest loss. Expansion of soy production also lies behind much of the destruction of the lesser-known Gran Chaco dry forest biome, which spans parts of Argentina, Paraguay, Bolivia and Brazil. Fires ripping through these fragile landscapes are very often set by producers converting forest land to produce soy. Another common ingredient in many chocolate treats is palm oil, the most widely used vegetable oil in the world. Palm oil adds that silky smooth texture to chocolate so loved by so many. It also limits melting which is useful in warm climates. But those valued traits have come at the cost of many thousands of hectares of forests in places like Indonesia and Malaysia, the two main sources of the world's palm oil supply. 
production is also ramping up in Africa and South America. For decades, consumer demand for palm oil in all kinds of products, from chocolate to biscuits to soap, has led to the clearing of tropical forests and burning of peatlands. Key conservation areas, such as the Lusa ecosystem on the island of Sumatra, Indonesia, home to critically endangered species like orangutans, tigers and rhinos, continue to be threatened by expanding oil palm plantations. Indonesia's deforestation peaked at over 300,000 hectares, more than 740,000 acres, in 2012. Yet forests continue being cleared and wildlife threatened. Production of all these ingredients is also tied to social justice issues, such as child and forced labour, abuse of workers' rights, and conflict with indigenous communities. As we've seen, growing chocolate's key ingredients leads to deforestation, but environmental impacts also occur along the chocolate supply chain. Shipping, manufacturing, packaging, and even consuming chocolate can be linked to a host of other effects. Contributing to climate change and pollution of waterways and coastal areas. So, how can chocolate lovers help get rid of this bitter environmental taste? They can vote with their wallets, buying sustainably grown and fair trade chocolate. Many of the world's largest chocolate companies and manufacturers are listening to consumers and have made zero deforestation commitments. To all too often, these only extend to the direct supply chain, leaving hidden deforestation a high possibility with unmonitored and untraceable indirect supply chains. Technological solutions, such as satellite monitoring, can identify and track deforestation or pinpoint areas at risk. When it comes to cocoa, agroforestry is touted as a solution to help stay away from monoculture crops, lessen pesticide use and increase productivity. Supporting and rewarding farmers can boost smallholder livelihoods and encourage growers to diversify crops to reduce the need to continually expand their farms into forests. These solutions, however, are needed at an enormous scale because we eat a lot of chocolate. Whether the future of chocolate is sweet remains to be seen.